That's pretty cool, isn't it? It gives you the opportunity just to play around with the different herbs, spices. It doesn't take long to do, it really doesn't. You can do it with your kids and it looks great. I feel like some bizarre knight in shiny armour. I wouldn't do very well in the battle though. <laughs> Come here so I can hit you with my raw chicken legs. Hi, I'm Heston. Heston Blumenthal. I'm in the Munch's Test Kitchen in Brooklyn and I'm going to show you how to make something show-stoppingly beautiful. It's a chicken souvlaki using my new barbecue. So to make this chicken souvlaki, you're going to need some chicken. I always prefer using chicken thighs. They've got more juiciness to them. There's more richness to them. Chicken breasts, you can use, but they will dry out. Each to his own, but any day. You know. <laughs> Give me legs over breasts. So this is really so simple. Start off with, we need to make the marinade for the chicken. I'm using some olive oil, parsley leaves here, some mint leaves, so a slight sort of Greek influence, hence the name of Suvalaki, and then some of this beautiful basil that I've just picked. There, put some salt and pepper. I'm being fairly generous with the seasoning. You know, if you barbecue a big whole chicken, you get most of the flavor from the outside. With this, because they're just legs, just pressed up, pressed up, pressed up, pressed up, there's an awful lot of surface area and you're gonna get an awful lot of aromatic flavor from it. It's gonna be fantastic. Well, it will be if I put the lid on the machine. Just really wanna make sure it's, it doesn't turn brown. That's normally quite a good sign when you're using green herbs. So it keeps the freshness. Also, I want more fragrance. So I'm using a couple of limes. So I'm just grating some lime zest. I don't really want the pith. I'm not taking the pith. I grew up in the 60s and Britain wasn't exactly the superpower of food in the 60s. Olive oil, you had to go to the chemist of olive oil because you didn't cook with it in England, you poured it into your ears. So I went to France for the first time on a holiday with my folks and I went to a restaurant and I sat under these wonderful, this Provençal Valley with crickets, cheese trolleys the size of a chariot, sommelier with his hand of one moustache and leather apron, the wine list that was like something out of a Cecil B. DeMille film, it's the Ten Commandments. That was it. I fell down a rabbit hole. I fell down a rabbit hole into a multi-sensory wonderland. That was basically it. And here I am, pressing a button on my own blimp. Smell that fragrance. The, the, can you smell it from here? The lime. I'm going to take some of this out now because this is going to be a finishing sauce. Then I'm leaving a bit in. I might even, just because I can, put a bit more olive oil in there and some garlic cloves. So I need to puree these up. <laughs> so I'm just pouring this over the chicken. The reason I've separated it is that the garlic in this mix here will really penetrate the chicken, but then this is going to be cooked. Personally, I'm not a fan of raw garlic, so I've left the garlic out of this. Hands. I often get asked, what's the most important tool in the kitchen? I just you can work the marinade in. If you love cooking, which I do, I believe you transfer that same energy through the food. So now that is actually ready. I'm going to take the two clamps from the barbecue and the rod. And the souvlaki now, I'm now going to assemble it. This means putting all of these boned chicken legs on this. And firstly, I'm going to use both the limes that I grated and an extra one. Just making a cross each end. So I'm putting these on here, which will kind of buffer the chicken. To what I love about cooking is at every step of everything we do, whether it's chopping an onion, boiling an egg, or carving a chicken, we have the opportunity to think, and we have the opportunity to be creative and to imagine. We have the opportunity to change something, to see how it goes. But what happens is we end up being so scared of failing that we never create. We don't need to learn how to be creative. We need to learn how to lose the fear of failure. Just give it a go. Let's just see what happens. So now I'm putting the chicken on the rod. The important thing 
is that the chicken legs don't spin around, so they'll turn with the rod. Something quite, maybe weirdly, therapeutic about sliding raw chicken legs onto a rod. I'm zenning out on raw chicken thighs, man. So, these are now done and dusted. Put the, my other clamp on this end. That's pretty cool, isn't it? A little bit squeeze on those lines. I don't know, I really like the sound. So this big boy is now going on the grill. A very technical moment this. Put that in there, put that on there. With a special flick of the finger, I do that. And then I'm just gonna press this button here. What I'm looking for here is to have, as it turns, some of the bits of chicken kind of fall down, hanging off. But they're gonna get licked by the flames and they're gonna get really nice and crispy. And then the meat that's compacted is gonna stay nice and moist. The beauty of this, this is what made human beings cooking and eating food that was cooked over fire. You can see, this, you can see now the, some of the fat stripping off and you can see the smoke coming up and the smell that's changing. It's, it's just a thing of beauty. So I'm looking for 150 to 160 Fahrenheit, two to three hours. End result, beautifully charred grilled chicken that still retains incredible amount of moisture and some freshness from the marinade. Right, so I'm gonna leave this now while this is cooking. I'm gonna head back inside and just sort out a couple of, just little garnishes, a couple of bits and bobs to go with this. Okay, so one more little thing I'm gonna chuck onto the grill. Make some comfy garlic. Olive oil, some garlic cloves, Bit of salt, chuck it on there. So this, the idea of this is it's going to be put on the edge of the grill, allow the garlic to confit. That's a posh French word that our chefs like to use, confit. I don't even know if it actually has an English equivalent, but it's cook and soften and caramelise at the same time. So that's going to go onto the grill. I'll put one there. The point of these is so they get really nice and soft and then they're going to go into a kind of mayonnaise type thing. So you can see the chicken is starting to cook on the outside and it's important to have this gentle cooking so you can get the caramelization and the charred note on the outside of the chicken without knackering, that's an English term, <laughs> without knackering or drying out the meat underneath. And because of the spit, as it turns, heats up, cools down, heats up, cools down, heats up, cools down. And that pulsating temperature gives a, gives a wonderful evenness to the meat. Okay, so the chicken is nicely underway. I'm just going to make a garnish, pickled cabbage. Pan, heat, hot, on, in here, sugar. Vinegar, just don't keep your face too near it. <coughs> because that happens. A bit of salt. Cabbage, I'm just taking the root out. I have big memories as a kid with um, kebabs. It's a very British thing. After the pub, you need loads of cabbage on it. And all the fat from the lamb drips out of your fingers. Luckily, this doesn't have so much fat in it. And my finger is still firmly on my hand. I'm just pouring the marinade over the cabbage so I can leave that. Sit. You know what? I'm going to go crazy. I'm going to put it in the fridge. Just because I want it to be cold. I'll drain it afterwards. It'll be pickled. I'm just going to start my mayo. So I've just taken this off the grill. Garlic cloves. And as you can see, they've caramelised. They've softened. I've just got some mayonnaise. You can see this, the garlic's puree so easily because it's so soft. I'm just mixing it in. Right. So that's nicely fused with confit garlic. Right, everything now is ready. I've made some flatbread. I'm gonna just pop it on the fire. I'm gonna shove some of this coal up. It should take very little time, this flatbread. If you buy regular pitta, it's even more important just to pop it on the grill because that heat makes a big difference. I love grilling in New York in the summertime. This is really cool. I'm gonna try and persuade people that I'm working. That is now ready to go. I'm just gonna turn the rotisserie off. Right now, there's a lot of chicken and a lot of eating to happen. Right, 
kitchen nice and clean. I've got a full glass of beer. I've got my souvlaki or my fat bread. And I'm going to just finish with the garnishes. This is the cool down pickled cabbage. Then this is some of the basil, mint, and parsley marinade. And there's some corn confit, garlic mayonnaise. I'm going to add a little bit of salt, pepper, and chilli sauce. Right now, I'm feeling rather pleased with myself. And even more now. I love making a mess. It's amazing how much chicken can make a happy bunny. Cheers.